Blessed be God who gives us life. Blessed be God who forgives us as sinners. Blessed be God, now and always. O God, whose Son became human, so that we would never be alone in our suffering, teach us to imitate you in all that we are and all that we do. Help us who are made in your image to be icons of compassion, magnifying your love and grace to one another through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Sing for joy, O heavens, and exalt, O earth. Break forth, O mountains, into singing. For the Lord has comforted his people and will have compassion on his suffering ones. The word of the Lord came to us, Zechariah, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Render true judgments, show kindness and mercy to one another. Do not oppress the widow, the orphan, the alien, or the poor, and do not devise evil in your hearts against one another. For God is my witness. How I long for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with the knowledge and full insight to help you determine what is best. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Bear one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them. Those who are being tormented or tortured as though you yourselves were being tortured.
One of the Pharisees invited Jesus to eat with him. So Jesus went into his house, and he took his place at the table. Now, a woman from the city who was a sinner, having learned that Jesus was eating in the house of the Pharisee, came with an alabaster jar filled with ointment. And she stood behind Jesus at his feet, weeping. And she began to, to wash his feet with her tears and to then wipe his feet with her hair. And she continued to kiss his feet and, and then to, to anoint them with the ointment. Now, when the Pharisee who had invited Jesus saw this, he began to say to himself, if this man really were a prophet, he would know who and <clears throat> what kind of woman this is who is touching him, that she is a sinner. Jesus said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. And Simon replied, oh, teacher, please speak. So Jesus said to him, there was a certain creditor who had two debtors. Now one owed him 500 denarii and the other owed him 50. When neither one of them could pay their debt, he forgave both of them those debts. Now which one of these do you think loved him more. Simon said, well, I suppose it was the one for whom the greater debt was canceled. And Jesus said to him, you have judged rightly. And then turning and looking at the woman, he said to Simon, you see this woman? I entered your house as your guest, and you didn't bring me any water to wash my feet, but she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You neglected to, to give me a, a, a kiss of welcome, but from the moment I came in here, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You didn't anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with this ointment. So I tell you, her sins, which were many, have been forgiven. Thus, she loves greatly. But for those who have been forgiven little, well, they love little. He said to her then, your sins are forgiven. Now the others that were sitting around the table, upon hearing this, they began to say to each other, who then is this who even forgives sins? But Jesus said to the woman, it's your faith that saved you. Go in peace. Well, soon thereafter, Jesus went out among the various villages and cities, proclaiming and, and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. Now, the 12 disciples were with him, as were some women disciples who had been cured of, of evil spirits and various ailments. Among them was Mary called Magdalene, out of whom seven demons had been cast. Uh, there was also Joanna, who was the wife of Herod's steward, Chuzza. There was Susanna and, and many other women who provided for them 
out of their resources. That was beautiful. Please be seated. On behalf of Kim and Trish and Kristen and Susan and I, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for letting us be a part of it. Thank you for letting Thistle Farms celebrate with you the joy of women coming together in community to heal and to love and to have compassion. We are grateful. It means that women who are coming out of the prisons and off the streets are going to have welcome bags like you're not going to believe. <laughs> it means that there's going to be jobs at Thistle Farms opening up to women for some who will be their very first job ever in their life. What you are doing is preaching this gospel, and you preached it great. <laughs> Let's just say that I'm your follow-up act. That was awesome. It really, really was beautiful. And hearing a group of women sing like that just sets my heart just with so much gratitude. I was ordained 25 years ago when really um, some of the great works around feminist theology were coming out in the debate about who Magdalene was and whether or not she was the woman that anointed Jesus' feet, whether or not she was the prostitute. All of these questions came up, and I got to, through this work of Thistle Farms and establishing the communities of women, get to be in on those conversations. Right at the beginning, I named the residential piece of Thistle Farms when we started Magdalene. No question in my head. And women kept asking, why are you naming it Magdalene? Because you think Magdalene was a prostitute. I 
named it Magdalene first and foremost because that was the first preacher of the good news. She was the first preacher that said beyond all we can imagine, beyond all bounds that we think can kill us, there is love and there is life. She is the prophet of hope. I named it Magdalene because whatever went on with her life, there was such deep leadership and connection that in every gospel story, she is the common denominator and Jesus lingered for her. A long time ago, I knew that the line between priest and prostitute was pretty thin anyway. I'll just let that sink in for just a second. I mean that. I mean that I would owe 500 denarii. I don't know about you, but I'm glad there's a wideness in God's mercy. And I think the lines that separate all of us are pretty thin. And surely oil blurs those lines anyway. Any line you could ever make, if you anoint another person's feet, you've crossed them. And you've blurred them and you've put yourself in a humble position to say, Lord, have mercy. And this is the season to say it, and to say it with great gratitude. We remember that a church without beggars is a museum. We remember that we come as beggars into this place, and we remember the places in our own lives, whether it's known to God alone that we owed 500 denarii. And we know that kind of gratitude. I always try to imagine that scene when she walked in. She wasn't risk averse, right? <laughs> and taking something so beautiful. And now and this nard, this pure ointment, this nard comes from the lavender. That beautiful plant that's about peace that you can use at death to prepare someone for burial, that you can use to remind us all that in this world we seek peace beyond all else. And then in my storytelling, because in so many of the scriptures, there was a richness of oil that I like to think somewhere in that alabaster jar, there was myrrh. that was there when Jesus was born, that carries the royal beauty that takes its time. Of course she uses oil. 425 scriptures, all anointing with oil at birth, at death, but at times when you want to set something aside as holy and good, when you want to remember it is holy ground that you've been set aside for a holy person, you in purpose, you anoint them. He's going to be king, anoint him. She's going to get married, anoint her. Anytime, I can just imagine the women, anything would happen, it was like, go get the oils. It's going to be a party. But oils are so important. We talked about it in the workshop, what a gift of creation it is and how it reminds us that all of us are drawn to healing and all of us participate in our healing. Of course, oils are the symbol of lavishness. To get that much lavender that I just poured in, 50 pounds of plant, 50 pounds of lavender. Imagine that in your head. 50 pounds of it went to make that much oil. 
It's the essence. It's the sense of lavishness. And so that's why we use these beautiful healing good oils. It reminds us about how lavish and wonderful it all is. One of the arguments for how we do this work in community is, that, is it sustainable? Is it scalable? Is it economical? Yes. And beyond that, it's incredibly lavish. Do you know how lavish it is? It's so lavish. 600 women spend an abundance of time together and feel blessed and have their lives filled and in the meantime provide the means for another community to serve women they have never even met. That's how lavish it is. It's so lavish in our community. We can build a house. We can house it with the best furniture where everything matches with beautiful landscaping. Invite women in and do it for half the cost it costs to incarcerate women. At no cost to the city. It's so lavish. We can do all this at Thistle Farms and save the communities that we serve three quarters of a million dollars a year. It's so lavish that at the end of it, we weep because we're so grateful. The world can offer us such harsh economic reality, and in return, we can pour oil on it. And we can say we are rich beyond belief, and we do not have to just put these things at odds with each other. We can be humble and lavish and caring of each other. This summer, one of the things we do at Thistle Farms is we travel around the world. and We make connections with women producers around the globe and say, we are going to help you economically. We're going to help you in the community. We're going to help you find distribution. And the idea is that there's not a lot of competition in justice work. There shouldn't be. It should be cooperation. And that all of us expand our markets and we find this new lavish work. And so we go to communities and we try to share the story. And this summer, a new woman, I think, Kim, is this your second trip ever? Third trip ever. But one of the things that happens after people graduate is they begin to go on the road and to be able to share their witness to love and healing with other people in a very lavish way. A woman named Lori went on her first trip with us to Michigan, and Lori shares the story of most of the women of Thistle Farms in Magdalene who are first raped between the ages of 7 and 11 and first hit the streets between the ages of 14 and 16 years old. In her case, she left Indiana hitchhiking as a runaway and then spent the next 20 to 25 years in prisons and in and out of off the streets. She came in, she graduated the program, and we went to Michigan for our first trip. And we got there, and she looked out on this big body of water and said, I've always wanted to see the ocean. <laughs> I was like, oh, Lori, I hate to tell you this. That's a lake. <laughs> but I promise I'll take you to the ocean one day. And then she told me it was the first time she was ever going to spend the night in a hotel and not have to do anything. And we got to the hotel and we checked in. About 30 minutes later, there's a knock on my door and Lori said, can I come in? And I was like, sure, you can come in. And I figured she was scared. I mean, she was at a hotel by herself for one of the first times. And she said, you're not going to believe what just happened to me. I was getting ready to go to bed, and I went in to brush my teeth in the bathroom, looked in the mirror, and I saw something beautiful. She recognized herself. That's how lavish it is. She recognized the face of God when she looked in the mirror. What a gift. I would pour a million gallons of oils to see it. And I pray that that's what this weekend is about for all of us, is remembering to look in the mirror and seeing something beautiful, to get a glimpse of that, about how lavish we are loved. And finally, I think about the woman who after she poured all that and all the speeches were made, how did she gather it up? 
Can you imagine how awkward that moment was? How do we close this out? I tried it once at a very fancy church. I poured oil on one of the women who were attending a conference's feet, and there was oil everywhere, and the pastor just looked horrified. <laughs> you remind me of her so much. <laughs> and she was like going like, what are we doing for communion now? Because now we have a liability issue. And I was like, I don't know, I didn't bring, I didn't bring anything. I didn't, I'd never done it before. <laughs> it was poured out everywhere. If we did it right now with this very fancy oil, you would be amazed and appalled. We have a little bit of that in us, how awkward and interesting it is when we get that intimate with each other. That's a little bit too much. And what I imagine is she has wept, and she has humbled herself, and she has felt forgiven. She has felt the lavish nature of an intimate relationship with her Lord. And now she has to do the work. Maybe she takes her skirts and she wipes it up as best as she can. Maybe she has some friends in the back. Joanna, everybody, come back in here real quick. <laughs> the guys are just like... But of course, she can't ever leave the way she came. Even in all that lavishness and messiness, she is changed by it. My prayer for all of us in this Lenten season, during this weekend time that we have together, during all of our spiritual journeys where we're loving and recognizing the Christ in each and every one of us as we remember the $500 denarii of debt that we have been forgiven is that we don't go back the same way. That it changes just a little bit. A seed has been planted that you grow. That you take one sentence, one thought of something that has happened and let it sink into your heart like an oil into your dry skin. And carry that back out. And preach how love heals. And how you're not going to believe what I saw. I spent the weekend with a bunch of women, and I saw the face of God. Holy Lord, giver of health and salvation, send your Holy Spirit to sanctify this soil, that as your holy apostles anointed many that were sick and healed them, so may those who in faith and repentance receive this holy unction be made whole. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
At this time, I invite you to find a healing station, to come forward, gather in circles, and pray for healing and be anointed with this holy oil.
Let us pray. God, this day is holy to you, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. Creative and holy one, you have called each of us to minister to others with the gifts you have given us. Let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. For we are members of one body, anointed with compassion and sealed in your mercy. The judgments of God are true and righteous altogether. The testimony of God is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. Almighty One, guide the leaders of the world and all in authority with the power of your Spirit that your mission of healing and reconciliation may bring freedom, unity, and peace to all creation. For we are members of one body, anointed with compassion and sealed in your mercy. We know that if one suffers, all suffer together. If one is honored, all rejoice together. Eternal One, let your healing and uniting power go forth into all the world to comfort those who are ill, to bring peace and liberation to those who are oppressed, and to bring good news to the poor. For we are members of one body, anointed with compassion. The commandments of God are clear and give light to the eyes. Gracious one, forgive us when we fail to be compassionate toward others and toward ourselves. Help us to repent. We, we do not act as though we were created in your image. Reconcile us to you and to one another. For we are members of one body, anointed with compassion and sealed in your mercy. Hear our prayers of intercession and healing. Assure us of your pardon of our sins. Accept our thanksgiving with those who rejoice. Enfold into your eternal life those who have died. For we are members of one body, anointed with compassion and sealed in your mercy. Your judgment, O God, is sweeter far than honey, and in keeping your word there is great reward. Cleanse us from our secret faults, that we may be whole and sound as we seek to live out the good news of your anointed Son, Jesus Christ, in the power of the Spirit, this day and forever. Amen. Now please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
walk in love as Christ loves us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Yeah, I wasn't in there. <laughs> Nadia hasn't left, has she? It is meet and right in every time and every place, in our joys and in our sorrows, to give thanks and praise to you, eternal God, beloved of sinners and saints. For you know the depths of our hearts, our scars and our wounds, our light and our darkness. In your tender compassion, you love us even in our fallen and broken state and sent your Son to bring us back to you in the power of your Holy Spirit. And so we join our voices with heavenly and earthly voices in all creation in praise and glory to you as we sing. Almighty God, you created humanity in your image and called us into loving service of your creation. You called your earthly creatures good. You delighted in us and we in you. You gave us the choice of relationship with you. And when we turned away from you, you remained near. Again and again, you called us back into relationship with you, offering healing, covenant, and your way of life. You sent your son to be the way. In his compassion, he chose to dwell among and eat with humble sinners. He loved the unloved, listened to the unnoticed, made room for the outcast, knelt in the dust to wash the feet of his disciples. He taught us to love our neighbors as ourselves, and ultimately he shouldered our burdens and sins as he opened wide his arms to embrace the whole world on the hard wood of the cross. He was anointed for both royalty and death. So we too have been anointed into his death and life by the Holy Spirit, that we might be made new, be forgiven and healed, be made full members of Christ's mystical body, bearers of God's word, and witnesses of God's vision for the whole world. On the night, Jesus was handed over to suffering and death. He gathered sinners at table, including the one who would betray him. Taking bread, he gave thanks, broke it, and said to them, Take, eat. This is my body, my whole self, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me.
after supper. He took the cup of wine. He gave thanks to you and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We kneel before you, giving you our all and washing you with our tears, tears of gratitude, of hope, of contrition, of overwhelming love. Transform us, God, in the making of this holy communion. Send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts and upon us, that Christ may be present in the bread and wine and in the faithful gathered. Make us one in you as you are three in one, that filled by you we may serve you and each other and grow in our faith together to be witnesses of your love and light to ourselves, each other, and the world. Through the Holy Spirit and in the name of Christ, we give all honor and glory to you who was and is and is to be generation to generation. Amen. And now, each using the words familiar to us from our various traditions, we pray as Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We who are many are one. For we all share one bread and one cup. Holy gifts for holy women.
Let us pray. <coughs> Blessed be God, who calls us together. Praise to God, who makes us one people. Blessed be God, whose word is proclaimed. Blessed be God, who has healed us and nourished us. Therefore we offer all that we are and all that we shall become. Amen. May God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth into the world in Christ. Thanks be to God. 